and welcome to our afternoon segment of Global Enlightenment. Tonight, we'll take a look at media bias in the New York Times, Russia Today, Al Jazeera, and the BBC. Specifically, we'll be looking at the case of Julian Assange and his infamous website, WikiLeaks. First, we'll take an in-depth look at the recent coverage of WikiLeaks by the New York Times. For the past couple of years, the New York Times has presented the Julian Assange case with a sincere and effort to be fairly unbiased. However, negative undertones are apparent. One of the articles about Assange's house arrest was described as a mansion arrest, and he was described as a serious flight risk. Both of these statements can make the reader feel put off by Assange and feel like he's not really serving his punishment and is a bad guy. A very common thing in most of the articles in the New York Times were quotes from Assange's lawyers, which are automatically biased. I mean, wouldn't you say good things or at least spend the truth for the person who is paying you to represent them? I give them an A for effort for trying to remain neutral. However, with WikiLeaks directly affecting America, it is hard to remain unbiased in an American newspaper. Maybe next time the reporters should hunt for better quotes and steer clear of blatantly biased ones. Now, I'd like to welcome our special guest, Julian Assange, who will be discussing his take on Al Jazeera's news reports. Hello, Sammy. Thanks for allowing me to join you on the air. How do you feel Al Jazeera has been reporting you and your website? Well, quite frankly, I've been reading the news about me from Al Jazeera for the past two years, and I think they make a very good attempt at representing both sides evenly. The majority of the articles do maintain a neutral stance. However, I have come across a few articles that go both ways. For instance, in one of their top ten of the year pieces titled WikiLeaks Transforming Journalism, the author maintains a very neutral stance throughout the article. But on the very top of the article is a large picture showing my face in darkness, making me look like an evil mastermind. I mean, look at this. This could, however, also be an attempt at irony, poking fun at how evil other news sources make me out to be. Fortunately, however, I have yet to find any glaringly anti-Assange articles in Al Jazeera. Likewise, I have not found any obviously pro-Assange articles either. So would it be safe to say that for the most part, Al Jazeera is free of media bias? Absolutely. They make a conscious attempt to stay neutral, and they do succeed in an overwhelming majority of the articles on me. Well, thanks again for joining us, and don't have too much fun in London. Don't remind me. I hate being stuck in this god. Speaking of England, the BBC has extensively covered the Julian Assange scandal. We will now go to Neville Longbottom, expert on media bias. Hello, this is Neville Longbottom, your BBC correspondent. Today we'll be focusing on the sticky and controversial Julian Assange case. Here in England, we've had a first look on the reaction of the British government. At the BBC, we tried to maintain a fair and balanced perspective. However, I can personally say the Brits were quite pissed. The Brits have claimed that they're trying to diplomatically handle the situation. However, they have sent multiple types of threats to the Ecuadorians. This list includes threatening to, them to remove their ability to have an embassy in England and also patrolling policemen even outside their bathrooms. The English have also said that they've attempted to make more diplomatic attempts. However, the Equatorians have contested this fact and spacked and saying that the Brits are unwilling to provide these human rights that Mr. Assange needs. Mr. Assange fears that if these human rights are not provided for, he will be sent to the United States by Sweden, and Sweden will use him as a gateway. The United States does not like him very much because of the wicked situation. This is also very sticky because Mr. Assange claims that he is innocent, while pretty much everyone else in the world believes that he is not. Last thing I want to say is that Ecuador has been back with the rest of South America on this issue, making it, making it to have the potential to become another long-lasting fight between a South American country and England, which is the South American fight between Argentina and England from the Falkland Islands. This is Neville Longbottom. Good night. Now, we know that news organizations from both the U.S. and the U.K. have been following the story for quite some time. Russian media, however, has also become very involved as well providing their own spin on the Julian Assange scandal. Here we have Vladimir Krashnov, an independent Russian news and journalism analyzer, reporting on the coverage by Russia Today. Vladimir Krashnov, what do you have to say about this? Russian media has focused much attention on anything related to the Julian Assange case, primarily Russia Today, which is a state-run organization. It's often described as a voice for the Kremlin and a critic of the West, and it certainly lives up to the ideal. RT has repeatedly lambasted the U.S. and its allies, and its scathing criticism doesn't seem to be going away. 
and since Julian Assange's organization, WikiLeaks, has published some embarrassing information about Western military actions in the Middle East, primarily Afghanistan, RT has devoted much time interviewing and quoting Assange and his supporters, while giving little to no voice for other government officials, except when RT decides to criticize them, giving a lopsided view of the issues at stake here. RT journalists have devoted much time writing articles that insinuate a conspiracy orchestrated by the U.S. that we would extradite Assange and possibly put him to death, even though the claims are backed by no evidence, and all the claims are simply backed only by Assange's statements, with no analysis on the validity of those statements. Uh, in fact, when it comes to quotes, the only analysis done by RT in recent months was on a statement by an Australian official, and the analysis was concentrated on what was unsaid rather than what was stated with RT attempting to hint at the idea that Australia would back a U.S. extradition, even though they provided no evidence for doing so. RT has also given extensive coverage of topics that are very loosely tied to Julian Assange and are rather extraneous and not necessary to the case. Uh, for example, RT spent much time in, on an article that concentrated on a publicity stunt by one of Assange's supporters rather than Assange himself in the case. Uh, Russia Today's claim of fair and balanced simply doesn't hold up. As you can tell, each media outlet has a different view on things, and this is evident through their reports, specifically the Julian Assange case. Each organization has put their own spin on the story. Now that you know the biases in each news source, it's up to you to choose which news source to read. I'm Sammy Blotts, and thank you for joining me for this episode of Global Enlightenment.